Welcome to Fast Effect Double Speed Magic the Gathering. Here we have Socrates on Thassa's Lash versus David on Oops All Spells. A couple of combo decks. David, you know, we are, we're not going to skip the mulligan step. This is often the longest part of the game with Oops All Spells. You're really looking for a first turn win. And ideally, if you have it, you'll have backup. You're not going to throw away any turn one wins, but... Best case scenario, you've got the turn one win along with a force of negation or, I'm sorry, pact of negation or a chancellor of the annex. The deck so far not able to run force of will very effectively, although I have seen some builds that have attempted to do that. They start to devolve into more of a storm build, and he does have the chancellor. Lotus petal. Whoa. All right. I mean, this is a deck that I've been playing around with. I don't think you can keep a hand that doesn't just win on the first turn. That is my current theory crafting around the deck. I think you just mull until you actually win. You can't really play off the top of the deck. Because you've got so many bricks. Like, you can draw Narcomoeba, Dread Return, Cabal Like, there's a million things in the deck that don't actually get you there. You definitely can't keep something without your key card, Undercity Informer or Balistrad Spy, so we'll see how this plays out for David. He may have a different build than me, or I might be wrong, but this feels very, very dicey to not be jamming that first turn win. And a Thoughtseize paying the one, and this is just getting so much worse for David. He's got Pact of Negation. So he has a Pact for when he draws his eventual creature uh, that'll win the game, but Dark Ritual is taken, now leaving him uh, without the mana to cast that creature. And I think this is... I think this is going to prove to be an error... I don't think I've played this in a tournament yet. I do have it built sitting here next to the laptop that I do these videos on, and I've goldfished a few hundred hands, keeping track in spreadsheets, uh, sets of 10 at a time. I don't have a master uh, sheet of all of the additional ones. That probably would have been a better way to do it, but it was a little bit of a time waster uh, that I was going back to. Now, we see a Relic of Progenitus, Something that Thassa's Lash can run main deck. Pact of Negation, not really useful unless you're comboing off. And this Relic of Progenitus, something that Sock is able to run main deck as it's got that synergy with Paradigm Shift. Which we haven't seen yet, but I imagine has to be in this build. There's the Jace. Four mana Jace, actually better than Jace the Mind Sculptor in this deck. And he mills, and actually there's the Paradigm Shift off the top, so it is in the list. And we'll see what Socrates has to get rid of his entire library. Boy, I wonder if it's running Mystic Sanctuary. That could be decent. Getting back a paradigm shift. The deck seems to be capable of explosive starts, but more comfortable, kind of like a sneak and show, like an Omnitel, where, yeah, I mean, you're going to have some hands that are really, really fast. But a lot of your kind of unbeatable hands end up being something that just builds up your mana base, casts your win conditions, having backup, having disrupted your opponent, and looks like Elvish Spirit Guy just being cast, hopefully looking to clear this Jace, but, I mean, that is going to take a while. And there's Thash's Lash, or Thought Lash, the namesake. And that'll do. We're going to see the entire library go away, tick up on the Jace, 
And that's a wrap. As Oops All Spells not having the goods for that turn one win. Let's see what type of hand he mulligans into in game two. Yeah, that is my contention that you've got to keep a turn one win with this Oops All Spells deck. Anything else, I mean, you can go ahead and play Storm. Like, there's a lot of solid combo decks that you can mulligan and make some real decisions with for your opener. But I think this is going to be very similar to Vintage Dredge and that you mulligan until you have it. Like, you don't keep with Vintage Dredge hands that don't have Bizarre Baghdad. That's the decision tree. If it's got Bizarre Baghdad, it's good enough. If it doesn't, it's not good enough. And that is my... Initial thoughts on Oops All Spells is you are literally only keeping a turn one win. There's an argument for some turn two wins where you actually have it versus a known deck where you know they're not going to like hit you with a Thought Seize or something because you've got like double backup or something. But even a turn two win, I don't think you keep with this deck versus practically anything. I mean, certainly not a deck like Thassa's last year that has discard and counters and graveyard hate. I mean, there's so many things that can go wrong. And we see here a Ancient Tomb. Look like Ancient Tomb. Hmm. Oh, Sock throwing me for a little bit of a loop here. I'm not sure what that masterpiece is. It looks like a Lotus Petal, but... Uh, Lotus Petal on David's side, along with a couple of lands, them entering tapped. The Swamp. Nope, another Lotus Petal. Oh, is it Besaju? Maybe that land is Besaju. Maybe he has a main deck Besaju and just didn't sideboard it out. Yeah, it just looks like an ancient tomb to me, but wouldn't make sense for it to be tapped. Oh, it totally does, because of the Chancellor. Sorry, guys. My mistakes make it in there, too. So the board is exactly what it looks like. Ancient Tomb Islands and a couple of Lotus Petals. The Chancellor tacks the Lotus Petal. Not ideal. To piece that one together. And a Brainstorm now. This is just a dangerous situation. That With this mana, Sock can just put the, together the two-card combo to win the game. He's fetching. I think I'm actually out of Paradigm Shifts. Sold a few playsets of them when the card started becoming of interest, and now this list has actually got my attention. I'm not sure what I'd play the next time I get to play Legacy. I'm uh, this holiday season, probably not going to be able to play it very much. Though I am looking forward, we're going to be doing a Australian Highlander, 7-point Highlander tournament, January 20-something. I'll be making the announcement very, very soon, but I think I'm actually going to try and play in that one. Bunch of lands here for oops. So Thoughtlash coming down here. Just stepped away to help a bunch of customers. That was appreciated. A bunch of people coming in supporting the store. And Thoughtlash is sticking. Not going to provide much in the way of protection as this combo in Oops All Spells is also looking to use the combo finish. And an Elvish Spirit Guide being cast. And that is simply not going to do. Oh, Jace off the top. That would have been nice. I do like the synergy here with Thought Lash in terms of manipulating the top of your library with Ponder and Brainstorm. I mean, that is a fun little aspect. Very similar to painter servant the way you can use grindstone to get the bad cards off the top of your library back when sensei's divining top was in the format ancient tomb 
Got to watch out for that life total when you're facing down a rogue Elvish spirit guide. Oh, and actually preventing the damage with Thought Lash. There you go. Heads up line. Glad we got to see that on camera. Yeah, this Thought Lash. Now Skeletal Scrying. Getting rid of a whole bunch of cards. Now Scrying is paying life. And now we've got the entire library going away and Vass's Oracle coming down. And she is going to end the game as Thassa's Lash. I mean, this is an interesting build. I, I'm actually looking forward to getting some games in with this at some point in the new year. That is all for this one, but don't worry. There is a lot more. Uh, you can check out our older videos, and we're always putting out new videos from ELD's Time Vault Games in Bellingham, Massachusetts. If you want to help the channel, of course, you can like, subscribe, share, tap that notification bell so you can know uh, the next time our new videos come out. Thanks for watching.